one way to find out um, about like missing soul shards is to use a pendulum. Uh, does everyone here know how to use a, a pendulum? Okay, so like you hold your pendulum over your hand and I usually use my right hand because I want my heart connected hand under it. But usually like, um, I, it doesn't matter. I'm getting too technical. Um, so you hold it over your hand and you can ask the pendulum questions like, uh, am I missing any part of my soul? And the pendulum will be like, duh, yeah, of course you are. And then you say, well, um, you know, you can go through all the yes and no questions or if you have like the little grid map having it take you so you can get an idea of like where is a piece of my soul being held captive and find it. And you can even use a pendulum like the whole process. Pendulum, will you help me retrieve my soul? Will you? And the pendulum will do it for you. Um, and what you'll find is like you almost like if you uh, treating the pendulum like uh, a dog that has the ability to go and find things, yeah. sniff it out, yeah, fetch and bring it back. And when you hit the point where you're like, pendulum, have you found my soul shard? Like you can, the more you find out details about it with the use of the pendulum, the easier it is to narrow it. And you'll find the pendulum will start swinging like crazy, 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 crazy. You know, like, bring it back, bring it back, bring it back, and then it'll stop. And you're like, is the, do you have the soul shard here? And it'll go, yes. And then you're like, okay, let's get it in me. And like, usually it'll start swinging the other direction, crazy, 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 crazy. And then it'll start going, wee, and then it'll stop. And so that is one way of doing a soul retrieval without having to do a lot. That's like an external way, but it's fun, you know? Uh, like I said, fun is good. Yeah. You feel a little more like you're in yourself, a little more complete. Um, that soul shard may have like some, you may want to chat with it. How are you feeling? Checking in. Like a, like if you had a runaway child return home, like what's going on? Um, what can we do to keep you here? You know, did you, were you kidnapped? Were you a runaway? Are you like a lazy daisy soul shard that wanted to hang out at a picnic or, you know, what's going on? Is there anything you need from me you're not getting? You can do all that, but you know, a lot of times once the soul shard returns, you're like, oh my God, why do you even leave? And the shard will be like, I don't know. This is so much better. So, um, so that's an excellent question. So, um, yes. I have a question. So, but you said if it's by soul contract, uh, there's a specific time that soul shard, shard has to be with the, uh, another person. So we still can actually take it back even if it's a uh, contract is not expired no. yet? No. If, the con if it's in contract, they'll say like, I'm in contract, check back with me in eight years. Or okay. I'm in contract, I'll see you after you're dead. Or, you know. Uh, but you don't f really... F feel like like it's not a whole yeah. Spirit, yeah yeah i mean it's good it feels good it's like um when uh you loan a book to a friend and when they're done reading the book they return it to you you know and sometimes they hold on to the book and you're like um hello can i get my book back you know well, that doesn't happen in a soul contract. They don't get to hold on to it after they're done reading it. Like they read it, they're done, you get it back. So that's that's like all in the good. Yeah? So but if it, if you just triggered something because she said that. So when the person dies, all the shards come back, is that what you said? So mm -hmm. does that impact people that if somebody is in close to them, they have to tell them to die? So, do they, do so it depends on if the soul contract is like, the shards will come into you while you're in life, like, um, or are the shards going to go to your higher self? In which case, it has no impact one way or another on you while you're in life. Like, you may have fragments of your soul loaned out to others that you, while you're in life, it has no, it's not even, it's a whole different situation. Okay. Um, so it, it really depends. Exactly. 
exactly. Um, some classic soul shard, uh, you know, um, contracts for while you're in life uh, can be like parent and child contract, mother and child contract. Um, if the parent is chosen by the child to help support the child to make sure that they achieve certain goals in life. And certainly all these starseed children we're seeing popping up everywhere. There's a significant amount of that because these starseed children are here for a very specific and important purpose. So they don't want their mother to mess it up. And the mother child contract is really like the first one to, might not be the first one made before life, but it's certainly the first one acted upon in life. So it's really the most important element because it sets the stage for everything. So if a star seed is coming to the planet and by the time they're three years old, they are connected with everything and they, you know, you know, these kids are like, oh yeah, I was hanging out with the Hindu gods today and, you know, whoever and... Um, oh, I was just off in the Palladians and they asked me to tell you whatever, you know, like they have to make sure that it's a very powerful thing. And, um, so they may have like part of their soul shard in the mother or in the mother and father or in specific people to make sure they're protected. But then when they reach the point where they no longer need that protection, they may send those shards back to the people who protected them as gratitude of, look, now some of the star seed meshed element of your soul is in you to help you with the rest of your life going forward. So that would be a soul contract person to person. Um, and, you know, like I said, there's just like all the contracts that can exist on the planet, there's even more in the non-planet. Okay, so the first ceremony we're going to do is um, a little more shamanic. So we have the three realms. There's the higher realm, which is like the gods, the divine beings, the angels, uh, the other, you know, collectives and all of that. There's the middle realm, which is like 3D world and like, you know, people you love when they pass, if they come and they hang out and chat with you, you know, like people have gone to spirit, but then still stay here. The lower realm is the earthly realm. A lot of shamanic work takes place in the, the lower realm. That's where you have your guides, your helpers, your elementals. Um, the first meditation, we're going to go into a cave and we're going to go deep into earth where an animal spirit guide will greet you. Um, this is not necessarily your animal spirit guide. So don't think in advance what kind of animal will be there. Whatever animal is there to greet you is the one that will be there. And you'll be like, but my animal spirit guide is the eagle and here I've got, you know, right, exactly. This, exactly. I mean, we have many animal spirit guides that come and work with us. So this is one that's specifically here to help you with this task. This animal spirit guide will lead you to a place where you can see all of your soul and see your soul shards and where they are. This may be, and this will be unique for each of you. Some of you may see it on like a map or like when you're in a shopping mall, you are here or like constellation of the stars or it may be a sense of knowing, or you may like in your mind's eye see, oh, I'm over here, I'm over here, I'm over here, or, you know, um, and then you will have your guide lead you to one of the shards and your guide will help you with the negotiation to retrieve the shard. And by negotiation, it may be that your guide is a monkey who grabs a shard and goes, run! <laughs> You will return back to the place where the, you know, a, or maybe they're doing a negotiation. They may say, you do it. You got this, you know, like just go with whatever the experience. Um, we'll see how we're holding the energy and how many adventures you and your animal can do. Um, and then we'll return, have a little share. The second one meditation after our share, 
will be the angelic one I mentioned. So you can feel the lower realm and the higher realm resonance. Um, and we'll see how much the angels can help us. Um, so that is all that I was told that we'll do. We'll see, because I think they want to do a few soul retrievals on each realm. Um, and we'll just see where it goes after that. Okay. All right. Um,